Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much to come out, come, for coming out and celebrating this beautiful couple. Um, I'm Jennifer Pribble, Caitlin's randomly assigned friend. <laughs> Literally, we both put our names in the hat for a random roommate at UNL. And before long, she was forcing me to love the office, and I was annoying her by snacking on almonds late at night. Like most college friends, we had endless fun times together, um, from parties and Husker games to making dumb videos in Victoria's dorm room. Uh, we really just did it all. Unfortunately, m most friends drift apart after college, but not Caitlin. She sticks. She m makes an intentional effort to keep the people she cares about in her life. And it's one of her most admirable traits. <clears throat> and similarly, she's also really good at making connections, which is how she has such a large room of people here to celebrate her. Well, I'm shaking. <laughs> Luckily, it's also what landed her Josh. She's one of the most extroverted people I know, and she's never hesitating to reach out to a stranger and initiate conversation. Josh is intimidating on the outside, but he's a teddy bear on the inside. <laughs> he's fun, he's a great cook, he's patient. He's the perfect man for Caitlin. <clears throat> Josh and Caitlin, we're so happy to be here celebrating you tonight, and we can't wait to watch you um, grow and to even love each other even more. And we also can't wait to get on the dance floor, so... <laughs> Everyone, please raise your glass and toast to the Buckingham Weibels. <laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. I am so honored and so excited to be here to celebrate the true love of Caitlin and Josh. Thank you both so much for letting me be a part of your day. It means so much to stand next to you. And you put on a beautiful and amazing wedding. And I cannot wait to party tonight. It's going to be fun. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Victoria. I'm Caitlin's bestie from college. I met her freshman year. Well, actually, I met you the summer before freshman year at New Student Enrollment at UNL. But of course, she didn't remember me. And yes, I remind her all the time. And I tell everyone, just for the record, so she knows. But fate had it in its cards. I ended up living next to Caitlin and Jen freshman year in SRAM. We immediately became friends because, come on, it's Caitlin. She's the sweetest, kindest, and most thoughtful human in my life. She's so supportive and always there for you. And you always find a way to make <laughs> you feel special. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> There are so many times I can think of Caitlin being there or doing something special, and one that sticks out just happened a few months after we met, actually. Well, I guess for the second time we met. Um, she put on a surprise birthday party for me. We had reservations for what I thought was a few friends in a quiet night at Texas Roadhouse, but when we walked in, I was surprised with all my friends. And as long ago as that was, 10 years, um, <laughs> I wanted to share that story because it just shows like the type of person she is. Right there from the start, always looking to do something for others, always thinking of others, and always going above and beyond. Uh, I couldn't be happier to st be standing here today to celebrate the amazing person you are, Caitlin, and the amazing life you and Josh have created together. Caitlin and Josh, you two are perfect together. And it's easy to see how in love you are with each other. I swear you guys speak the same language. Like, when I'm there, they'll just, like, say a couple words and then, like, laugh so hard. I'm like, wait, did I miss something? Um, I'm just so honored to call you guys my friends. I'm excited to see this next chapter and can't wait for this exciting life you guys have together. Now let's all raise a glass to the newlyweds. Cheers. All right, y'all better settle in. I got some things to say. <laughs> so Josh and I met in fourth grade. I've had a little bit of an existential crisis because I think I did the math right. Our friendship can now legally buy alcohol. 
So I'm going to just sort of hot potato that your way. Um, I, yeah, I know, right? I know. Um, I was also going to start by saying that I was going to try to make a real joke about how I've always looked up to you because, you know, you've always been. But then Zach broke out that stepladder thing to start, and I realized it's swinging a miss for me. So we're going to try again. But in all seriousness, throughout our friendship, I, I mean this, you've always been cooler than me. And I have always looked up to you. Um, now, let's put a pin in that. I'm not saying Josh is like the epitome of cooler, just cooler than me. Uh, low bar. But I looked up to Josh for a couple reasons. Some of them are more minor. Uh, for instance, he always seemed to know what to say, and unlike me, kind of know what not to say, to not make a fool out of yourself. <laughs> I think he learned earlier than I did the importance of, like, quiet confidence and just not speaking too much, and, you know, even if he has no clue what's going on. And if you don't believe me, just know multiple, like, trips we've taken. Josh will just start, like, casually walking a very incorrect direction but everybody follows very confidently. <laughs> he just is a natural leader. Uh, but more impressively, I feel Josh learned very early on, and this is where I'm gonna gas you up, buddy. Uh, Josh, Josh knew earlier that being cool didn't necessarily mean being ex exclusive and, being, and excluding other people. Uh, I think of this story, the one that always sticks out to me. There was a girl in like sixth or seventh grade, and she was kind of like goth emo, and she really, really liked good Charlotte. And like many a junior higher, we were like, oh, different, and we weren't always the kindest to her, but not Josh. Josh never took part, and there was one day, I, th I don't remember how it came up, but we were just being, you know, awful, and Josh finally said, you know what, I don't know why you give her such a hard time. She's perfectly nice. She minds her own business, and you know what? I like good Charlotte. <laughs> we all felt very silly. Um, and she ended up leaving our school, but then Good Charlotte released Good Morning Revival in 2007, and so she was vindicated, and I realized Josh had much better taste in mid-2000s pop-punk emo bands than I did. <laughs> Speaking of Good Charlotte, shout out to Jeff Weibel's 2007 personal home computer. Uh, it gave its life so Josh could pirate that for our entire class. <laughs> so like I said, cooler than me. And you always did the right thing. You genuinely are one of the best dudes I know. Um, in our friendship, Josh has always had my back. And I, there's a lot of stories I want to go into, but for timing's sake, uh, I want everyone to get through this. So I'm not going to go into them a lot, but I think that started because Josh and I were the quarterback and center for every football team from seventh grade to high school. And remember, the innovation known as the shotgun formation had not yet reached eight-man football. So we were under center. And if anyone remembers me from junior high, knows that I could barely see over Josh's rear end when he was in a three-point stance. So to use his terms, we got V close. And I only really wanted to bring this up for your sake, Caitlin, because I know you've wondered. You're like, man, they're kind of weirdly close. They lived together for like 10 years, and I promise you this, there's been no practice snaps since high school. Josh never wants to when I ask. <laughs> I'm glad I put pause for laughter in there and I was really worried it wasn't going to be one. Um, <laughs> fast forward to when Caitlin came around. And I think this has kind of come up that, you know, oh, well, let's get to it first off. Again, Josh, cooler than me, I was going on no dates. Josh at least would go on one or two. But I never met any of them. And... He doesn't wear his emotions on his sleeve. I think we've talked about that. But I could tell when he wanted me to meet you that it was different. He was excited in his, in his way. Uh, he, I could tell he cared very deeply for you. Uh, and it made sense when I met you. You're, you're fierce. You're loyal. You're fun. You match his sarcasm. You make fun of me in hurtful ways that make him laugh. <laughs> and I know that's not like in his top 10 things that he loves about you, but it's definitely, I feel confident it's top 25. Um, but y'all fit very well together, uh, mostly because you're alike, and I want to emphasize that, but there are a couple ways I've noticed that you're a little different, uh, and those ways that you're different, you guys complement each other very well. And in my all of one and a half years of marriage, I think that's important. Um, one I'll highlight is one I feel some kinship with you about, Caitlin, because like me, I think we fall into that type A spectrum a little more, and I think we like to tell ourselves, well, we keep Josh around because he's a little more type B, but the more I think about it, I don't think that's true. 
Josh occupies a party of one spectrum known as type B dub. It's, <laughs> it's below. Uh, this man's a mess sometimes with his organizational skills. It's awful. Um, one of my favorite experiences after living with Josh for about a year, um, I learned that for six months straight, he had left for work 30 minutes early every day because he had worked it out that he had a slow leak in his tire. But he figured he could go to QT 30 minutes early, and he had calculated if he filled it up in the morning, he could get to work and home, and I think sometimes even two days in a row, before he had to do it again. And I love this because when I asked, I was like, why? He's like, well, I had to go get my bang energy every morning or whatever poison you were putting in your body at that point. And it just, he was like, yeah. So I mean, it, I was impressed because he was being responsible and getting there on time, but bananas decision making. Like it doesn't make any sense. And it's not a money thing. He was making like two times my salary. I have no idea why he wasn't just like. <laughs> but again, it's good because he needs someone who will just be like, hey, you know, how about I just call Discount Tire and set something up for Saturday for you? And I'm glad that you get to do that now. <laughs> anyway, so I just, I love you both so much. And to Josh and Caitlin. I'm sure glad you covered funny. That takes a lot of pressure off of me. Good Lord. Um, yeah, I was going to say, mine's pretty sappy, so buckle up. Yeah. Uh, so for those of you who don't know me, my name's Austin. Uh, Josh and I have been best friends. Sorry, thank you, thank you, thank you. Josh and I have been best friends and chosen brothers since we were 12 and 13. Around 2005, our families moved to a still-forming subdivision in West Omaha. He was just down the street from me, and eventually we were put on each other's radar by our friends Ashley and Sarah, sisters who live just across the street. Yeah, represent, yeah, yeah. Really, y'all started it. You're like, you nerds need to get together. Like, there's, there's something here, yeah. Um, we all banded up and took on our angsty teen years together. We had other kids, uh, kids from the neighborhood in the mix from time to time, but we were always the core. Bonded by Halo, one, and two, <laughs> and three. Before, like, eh. Uh, bonded by DDR in the basement or at church lock-ins that I was invited to for some reason. <laughs> like, I still don't get why I was a part of that. Uh, um, ping pong, darts, pool, foosball, anything outside in the street. And I hate to say it, but I'm pretty sure I'm still the best at all of those things. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Uh, even though we all went to different schools, we were still all super close and spent any time we could with one another. Truly the good old days. <sighs> Eventually, Josh brought Carson in the mix. Still not sure how I feel, feel about that one. <laughs> Kidding, of course. Uh, Carson's easily become one of the coolest and authentic dudes that I know. He's always always down to go in on a bit and just yes and you until the entire group has just walked away from us. <laughs> and most of the time it's always worth it. <laughs> always. Um, yeah, so, it, and you know, that meant a lot to me and like, <sighs> sorry, I'm getting sappy. Carson was always so kind in listening to track after track of music that I produced, typically from my parents' basement. Uh, and he wanted to hear more. He eagerly wanted to hear more. Hell, everyone, Josh, Sarah, Carson, uh, they deserve my thanks for putting up with my aspirations of being a DJ and electronic music producer. <laughs> it's no easy task. Um, so yeah, it, it took writing this speech and sitting with my thoughts about Josh to fully take in the significance of our lives colliding when they did. It was a time of great change and loss for Josh and I in similar ways. Josh lost his stepdad when he was 13, and around the same time I lost my mom, I was only 14. So we both had suffered the loss of a parent at a pivotal age and at essentially the same time. Something that oddly enough only just dawned on both of us while writing speeches. <laughs> We're like, wait, that was like the same time, right? Okay. It was pretty incredible timing. We then found ourselves in growing blended families who moved west. I had to switch school districts between middle school and high school, and I lost a lot of friendships because of it. But then here our little neighborhood crew came, keeping us all from feeling alone. I'm very thankful for that time, 
I had people in my corner who, for whatever reason, put up with my angsty wannabe skateboarder Lincoln Park loving ass. <laughs> An act of love that I will truly forever be grateful for. I love you, man. Thank you. Can we give a hand to this big, beautiful man? He's, he's the best, truly. And what about this wedding? Can we give it up for Caitlin, too? The, the planner, the nail down. I mean, I personally didn't know that we were going to be on the new episode of Say Yes to the Dress. I had no idea. Caitlin came into the picture at an interesting time for me. It was mid-2019, and my fiancé, Hannah, and I, fiancé then, wife now, uh, Hannah and I were moving to Corvallis, Oregon. We met her the night of our going away party, which was also the night before we moved. So we missed a lot of the beginning of their relationship, but I knew just from that one night at the glorious Musette in Benson that my guy was in perfect hands. Josh is filled with love and warmth, but you gave him an outward glow that I hadn't seen before. I was reminded of this timeline recently when Caitlin and I got to gab on the phone for a while, talked wedding stuff, gushed about Josh, the meaning of life, that sort of thing. I was upset that we hadn't done it before. It was just more confirmation of the love you share. It comforts me a great deal to know that he's found love like I have. I'm really honored to have been made co-best man or best man-ish, as was deemed on the bachelor party. <laughs> This is a special group of people, and I'm thankful to be part of it. Um, now remember, kids, love is infinite, and time is not. Cherish every day, damn it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. All right. <laughs> so now Dad gets to talk. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so i'm caitlin's dad so man listen to all these stories about you josh uh crazy but uh <laughs> so now all the young people have spoken i'm gonna come over here so i'm not on my back to everybody um so now the old people get to speak and the difference is they're on their phones. Here I'm holding something and writing in 16 font because I can't read without glasses. So, but uh, going old school. <laughs> so, but first of all, thank you everyone for being here. It's great that you could all come and celebrate with Caitlin and Josh. And it just seemed like it was so long ago that you got engaged and now here we are, it's over after tonight so the 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 fun the fun begins for you too so so uh so yeah so here with julie and i we're giving our daughter away to josh and uh who's just a great wonderful young man and it's just a pleasure to welcome him into our family um yeah we love you josh you're great so um so as you noticed earlier during the ceremony uh both Julie and I walked Caitlin up. And it's like, what about me? That's my one job. I get to walk my daughter up the aisle. And uh, it's both of us, not just dad. And she said to Julie, well, it's not like the 1800s where we're receiving a dowry of seven goats from Josh. <laughs> so both of you walk me up. OK, so that's Caitlin, you know, our beautiful, talented, witty daughter. So, uh, but Kaylin's just been a bundle of joy since she was born. Uh, the 10 pound baby that Julie got to carry and she wanted to stay with Julie longer and, and uh, but she finally came into this world and it's always happy, well, most of the time. But one thing for sure, Sue, she was the boss, right? First born. That's right. <laughs> That's my oldest sister over there. She was always the boss. So, uh, but always the boss with Barney in tow. Everything was Barney. Barney, Barney, Barney. We went to the Barney show. Uh, had all the tapes and whatever. And do you still have all the VHS? All right, that's great. So, but, uh, but Kaylin always went above and beyond to just do things right and to treat people as she wanted to be treated. 
Um, in school, if she had an A, she always fought to get an A+. Plus. She was always wanting to be the best in that uh, class. And it really showed when she went off to school in Lincoln, she was almost a sophomore as a freshman. So that was great. So, and like most parents, we try to push our kids into careers that we once had. So when she was 16, it's like, hey, Caitlin, you know, dad was worked in a grocery store when he was your age. Maybe you should go work at Bag and Save as a checker. And she was like, really? And so she reluctantly went, got the job, because Hy-Vee wouldn't hire her for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, here she was working as a checker at Bag and Save. And, but she was a natural for that job because she's great with people. As you know, she's just great with people and talking to her coworkers and everybody, they're just ranting and raving how great Caitlin is. Well, maybe that was because I got her the start at Bag and Save and she learned how to deal with people. So I, maybe I can take credit for, for that. So, um, but anyway, I think later she admitted that that was probably a good job for a 16 year old to have to learn how to look someone in the eye and say hello. So, um, but her talents continued into high school, uh, show choir, um, along with Lauren for a year or so. I think those two had a great time. But uh, what a joy it was as a parent, seeing her perform that same couple songs like 15 times over throughout the year. <laughs> I hear some of those songs today and I'm like, ah. Just get that out of my head so but uh, but after that she went to college that flew by uh, went up to Minnesota and then she came back and really just saw how much she grew as a person uh, the dedication that she has to Barry yes Josh Barry <laughs> <laughs> um, just you know Barry came before you so and uh, he's a great man but uh, but yeah, but she met Josh and you know, just so happy with life and everything. And so thank you, Josh, for, for making her happy. That's all I ask. So, but yeah, can't believe we're here 28 years later to give her away to Josh for seven goats. <laughs> and, but we love you both. And uh, your mom and I wish you all the best here for the rest of your life. Um, you know, there's going to be good times, there's going to be bad. Um, yeah, believe me, there's going to be both. You're going to be just, you know, pulling each other's hair out, everything else. And, and, but in the end, it's all worth it. The commitment that you have to each other, uh, it'll make things great in the end. Uh, believe us, you know, with your mom and I, after 30, <laughs> five, no, <laughs> yeah, 35 years, you know. It's, uh, it's great, so, uh, but anyway, so, um, but yeah, love you to death, Kaylin, Josh, love you too, uh, can't wait to see you two grow, and uh, again, welcome to the family, and cheers to Josh and Kaylin. Thanks, Dave. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Amy, if you don't know me. I would be B-Dub's mom. Yes, blessed to be so. Uh, I did do technology for my speech. Dave, though, I love you represented the old school way. Um, but mine is a little nuanced. I typed mine up on a Word document on my laptop and sent myself a copy so that I could have it so I could read it to you. Um, now, I actually don't know how much of this I'm going to follow because I feel like just about everything I wanted to say and to convey to you about these two young people um, and the life that they've built separately and together, um, everybody else has already said, but so if you hear it twice, I guess you hear it twice. Um, I was feeling really angsty about this speech because, you guys, this is my fourth wedding speech in five years. 
yeah. I was like, did I already say everything? Like, what if I repeat? What if, I mean, I, I've read all of the blogs. I've read all of the suggestions about how to do this and the structure and you should be funny and tell personal story. I mean, like, there's a thing. There's a format for it. But, um, you know, I think some of those, some of those expectations were self-imposed. Nobody really cares if I follow the formula, right? Nobody cares. Um, and um, this, is the, this is my last wedding speech that I'm going to give. And um, I don't know. That's a lot of pressure, okay? It's a lot of pressure. Anyway, um, I'm going to look at this and see where I'm at and maybe my um, thing, if I can get it to orient correctly. Um, <laughs> Actually, I did. I thought that this writing this speech was going to be this easy breezy thing because I've done it before. Um, but just like it is with parenting, you think you know what you're doing, and then you have children, and they let you know real quick. You don't. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> and Josh, uh, true to that form, let me know loudly at 2 a.m. for hours and hours that I was a brand new mom and I had no idea what I was doing. But he was patient with me through all of my learning and my figuring out what it means to be a good mom and to love a kid. Um, he was patient with my, my impatience, my disorganization, my easily frustrated, my vociferous way of cheering him on in all of his endeavors. Okay, now I know some of you maybe weren't so gracious with me about that, but you know what? I am a loud and proud mom, okay? And I don't regret it. Not a single yell, not a single scream do I regret. Um, but Josh, you've always been so patient with me through all of the different stages of the life that we had together, me as your mom, and now with you as an adult, I hope friends. Um, you've always been patient and gracious and you have taught me to be patient and gracious, sometimes with myself and sometimes with others. Caitlin, um, you know, everyone knew you were special when we met you, because we met you. <laughs> this has been said, right? This has been said. Josh did not bring girls home to meet the family, ever, or very rarely, anyway. Not, not ever. He did. There were a few. But... When he said he wanted you to meet us, we knew. We were like, all right, he wants us to meet her. She must be good. And we found out pretty quickly that that's true. You were special. You are special. Um, you are, we came to learn that you are loyal and that you are fun and that you are brave and that you are tenacious. And... Um, you just fit right in with us from the very beginning, and I have so appreciated that. Um, I've told you this before. I have felt like you were my daughter-in-law a long time before. Um, I am grateful to be able to celebrate with you guys tonight um, and to tell you both that I will love you forever and I will like you for always. Okay? Um, now's the time in the, like, format thing. You're supposed to, like, give marriage advice or whatever. I don't have a lot of marriage experience. I was only married for 10 years. But there are a lot of people out here who've been married a lot longer, and you really should seek out their wisdom because I'm sure that they have a lot. But the one thing that Eric and I, I think, learned um, about marriage is that there are going to be the highest of highs and the lowest of lows, and a whole lot of mundane, day in, day out, dealing with the bullshit. <laughs> it ha it, and that's largely what marriage is. But what we learned is that you can get through all of it, the ups and the downs and the in-betweens, when you turn towards each other, and when you have a village to support you. And I really think you guys have a great start at both of those things. So, to Josh and Caitlin. <laughs> may you always turn towards each other. And, of course, may love to love follow you forever.
Oh, man. Uh, there's been a lot said tonight about my stoicism, and I've cried no less than six times today. So, <laughs> um, I, uh, wow. It's been a day. Um, to, to be loved and experience that is uh, something that's truly special. So thank you all. Um, for being here and celebrating with us. I can't um, express how much that means uh, to me and Caitlin. Um, uh, to Dave and Julie, uh, thank you for welcoming me um, and putting up with me at times. Um, your support every day leading up to today um, has meant the world to me. Um, thank you. Uh, Mom, dad, mom. <laughs> uh, I know it wasn't easy. Um, and it's, it's not common to make that work. And again, I can't possibly express how much that means to me. Thank you. Um, to the rest of you, I love you all. If you weren't I invited, we invited you here to, because we love you. And there, I wouldn't have it any other way. So from both of us, thank you so much. Let's have a party. <laughs> Cheers.